What if we, the people, actually controlled the government? Here all the time, vote for me, I'll change this, you know, I'll do this. You know, if I get in office, I'm going to do this. We all know there is, we all know the three branches of the government, okay? Well, I'm here to tell you, there is actually four branches now. And it's in this fourth branch where most of our problems lie with policy making. Now, that's not saying the House and the Senate and stuff don't make bad policies. Or they'll pass bad policies. But it's this fourth branch that we all know all too well. This fourth branch is the, all the three-letter agencies. You know, we know who they are. I don't need to sit here and name them all. We're going to call him Mr. 45. You know who I'm talking about. When, when he got in office, he said he was going to drain the swamp. Okay, you've all heard that. And when he said he's going to drain the swamp, it's, it means more than what you think it meant. Yeah, there's a swamp in the main government. But also, this fourth branch of government is a major swamp. And while he did his term, he tried to pass an order. He actually did sign an order. We'll get into that in a little bit. Trying to regulate these three three-letter agencies that can make policy and have no no oversight. You know, we can't we can't hold them accountable like we can our representatives, you know, senators. We can't hold this fourth branch accountable. I'm gonna read this article a little bit. This was kind of, this is what's pretty interesting. It does make you think now when he said he was gonna drain the swamp, it meant more than just what we, you know, the main what we thought, because I myself didn't realize we had four branches now. I knew the three, I knew the three letter trouble agencies we have, but now the three letter trouble agencies have become the fourth branch and that branch has no oversight. We can see that in a lot of the rulings they made. Um, the ATF. You know, the ATF bump stocks was a, was a big one. You know, they, they, they can make rules and laws and policy without it being half, without it being voted on by the House, the Senate, or even if it's even constitutional, you know what I mean? They can make their laws. Okay, I'm going to get this article up. The government is managed by elected representatives who are, in turn, elected by the people. Government is farther restrained by checks and balances between three branches, each of which is accountable, ultimate, for the people who live, who live under the laws. And like the ancient system of government in which the only people who were truly free was the, was the 
top tier. Under a new system, every adult citizen has po political rights. No one rules over anyone without accountability. Also, part of this, no one government has a permanent job exempt from oversight. The laws and rules under which people live are not invented by faceless bureaucrats, but rather by representatives whose names can be voted out. That's basically what we, what our take on government is, you know. But then we get down to our fourth branch that is in existence, okay. Um, this system, this was actually the first act was actually created back in 1883, okay. The fourth branch of government gradually came into existence. This is, this is what we now know as the administrative state. It consists of millions of employees with maximum power who answer to absolutely no one. The Federal Register lists 432 agencies that currently employ people who are beyond legislative reach, but they still make policy and determine the structure of the regime under which we live. But we the people have no real control over them. Not even the president can control them. Okay. The system was created with one piece of legislation in 1883. It was the, that was the Pendleton Act. Okay. The New Deal exploited the new system. Um, in 1946, the administrate even got its own constitution. Uh, the Administrative Procedures Act. And in 1984, the Supreme Court um, decision in Chevron versus NRDC even entrenched deference into the agency's interpretation of the law. The results of something the founders never imagined, hundred, hundreds of three-letter agencies exercised in harmonic control over the country. Everyone got to know the system well from 2020 as the CDC invented myriad roles on the spot that shut businesses and churches and even legislated, legislated how many people you could have in your home for a party. We all, we all know that in the past two years. I think that affected it all of us. Okay, Mr. 45. I'm going to say that because... If I say his name, they might give me, put me in jail again. <sighs> okay, this problem bothered Mr. 45, okay? He came into power, he promised to drain the, drain the swamp. He soon discovered that he could not because most federal employees were beyond his reach. Things got widely out of hand after he made an enormous error of green light, green lighting lockdowns in March 6th. March 16, 2020 press conference. After that point, and all the way until election, his presidential power slipped even, even farther as the administrative bureaucracy welded power without precedent. Okay, two weeks before the election, uh, Trump, well, 45, came up with a solution. Okay, it's called Executive Order 13957. Or another, it is called Schedule F. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, it created a new category of federal employment. Any employee involved at any level in political making would be subject to presidential oversight. It makes sense. These are executive level agencies, so the president because he bears responsibility for what they do, should have some personal control over them. Now you can see why they are pursuing to have him not run again, okay? Of course, as soon as Mr. Biden took office, he reversed it, signed it out. His long executive orders here is a bunch of fancy talk. And, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically, it pushes 
pushes the internal review of all agencies to reclassify employees, thus making them subject to normal standards of employment, the same ones that every person in the private sector adheres to. So that's, they would make them basically employees of, employees like everyday me, you, average citizen, you know, are. Okay, this is some of the objections that was uh, brought up. Schedule F would bring back the spoil system. The term itself is a smear of system in which elected leadership can actually make a difference in public life. Are cronies hired? Yes. Are good people sometimes fired? Probably, but the alternative is a dictatorship by bureaucracy itself, and that is what is truly intolerable. Instead of the spoil system, a state in, in which elected leaders can be enacted, can enact policy by controlling personnel is called representative democracy. It is also the system the Constitution gave us. Okay, Mr. 45 issued Schedule F because he wanted more power. Okay, depends on what you mean by more power. More power of bureaucracy? Yes. But the driving motivation here was to emancipate power from ruled, from being ruled by bureaucrats that he could not control. It was also designed to stop the bureaucracy from working directly with the media to under, undermine, through lies and smears, the work of the administration. In words, elected leaders absolutely do need more power over the deep state. Next one they came up with. This would gut the government of expertise. This is a strange presumption that, educa that educational credentials and permanent job equals exper expertise plus good outcomes. That is very obviously true. Good outcomes come from basic, basic competence and worth et ethics. Those are in short supply in government precisely because the turnover rate is less than zero, unlike the private sector. Anyone who has worked in a federal agency knows this. The best way to unleash genuine expertise is through normal job, job accountability. Next one I came up with. Presidents would, presidents would use this to politicize the bureaucracy. Decent point, but the bureaucracy is already heavily politicized and always in the direction of policies that push more power and money toward the government. Everyone knows this. Is there a danger that a radically dangerous pre president would press bureaucrats into farther politicization? Yes, but there's an easy solution to this one. Cut the reach and power of the agencies themselves, consistent with the Constitution. Finally, at the crucial point, elect leaders could override the influence of private industry, which has captured their opera operations. Okay, bureaucracy would get around us by minimizing Schedule F designations. Um, that they would certainly attempt that, but that would require employees refrain from policy determining, policy making, policy advocating positions. This would be very great. If they eschewed Schedule F and did that, the Office of Personnel Management could hunt them down and AG itself would be responsible for illegal actions. So this Schedule F that he made included all the would classify all the people that make policy. Okay, able to make policy, they would be classified under Schedule F, and they would be overseen by the president. Because at this moment in time, they have no oversight. They do what they want to do when they want to do it. Uh, there seems to be a downside of the system, as Mr. 45 imagined it, but all of them trace to the inflated powers of the federal government itself. Yes, a vast, vastly ambitious, ambitious government machinery would always need bureaucracies, and they would always have the problem with waste, abuse, and unneeded exercise of power. Perhaps then the best long-term effect of Schedule F would be to inspire a rethink of the government's role in a free society. It seems remarkable that the executive order creating Schedule F was issued at all. It needs to be pressed upon any farther reformers 
as a path to revisit ideally the legislative support, support. Until that time, there will continue to be a great problem that our elected officials are positioned to be a little more than dancing marionettes while the administrative states state wields all the real power. So we hear, you know, elect me, I will do this, I will do that. That is true to a point, but this fourth branch now we have of all these agencies that can make policy and law and say you're a criminal because we think this is bad or and they have no no oversight at all we do need a, a revamp of the government I agree. But pulling all the politicians out and replacing them with new ones may make, you know, a little bit of a change, but until you get somebody until you get this these agencies under control, you know. They're going to continue to make laws, you know, recommendations. They're just going to continue to make stuff that we, as the people, have no say-so in. We, our representatives can't vote on it. We can't vote on it. It's if these agencies say it is. That is what goes. So it sounds great. You know, we actually controlled the government. It would be great, but we all know within three letter agencies how they like to push their way into people's lives and they've they've become corrupt because they have no oversight. There's nobody to hold them accountable for when they do something they're not supposed to do. They get away with it. That explains by a lot of the problems we have, why we have a lot of problems today. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I find that kind of interesting. I mean, we all heard the agencies, the three-letter ones. But it was interesting to know that they have no oversight. There is nobody that can really override them. I mean, you, you got the Supreme Court that could, you know, if it makes it that far, you know, case-wise. Case but there really is nobody to override them, to, to oversee that they ain't you abusing their power too much and hold them accountable if they are. They can do what they want, when they want, with whoever they want. And they know there's no, there's really no legal action that can be taken, you know, that will be taken against them. That explains why we have a lot going on in society right now. Alright guys, that's it.